Today we're going to look at how to create a design in order to send to the laser to be etched. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll jump on to Google Images. You're going to look for images and designs that you want to etch onto your ply and clock face. Um, a good rule of thumb is to always do search tools. That way you can get a nice large image. We're after a black and white and also a line drawing. So they're types of images that will work well with the laser and you don't have to do much editing too. So once you've got your two images, you just save them as and then chuck them onto your desktop here. So the next point of call is to open up Photoshop. What we need to do is we need to create a digital ply clock face. Now to do that, we'll go File New. Always make sure it's your name on it. That way when it comes to etching, it's a lot easier. Preset's going to be custom. Width is going to be 200 and millimeters. Height is going to be 220 and millimeters. And resolution is 100 pixels per centimeter. So once you've got those details all inserted, you can just hit OK. And that's a digital representation of the ply clock face that we have. The next step is to get these rulers up the top on the side. So you go View ruler and then if you don't have millimeters you can just right click on the ruler and then go into millimeters. What we need to do is we need to just put some guidelines in here which are 5 mil off these lengths, the sides, um, because they sit in the trench. This, this whole ply clock face slides into the trench when, um, when you're inserting it into your mantle clock. So we can put some little guides in there. What I've done is I've left clicked on the ruler and you drag it, so you're holding that left click and you'll drag it into two and a half lines. So two and a half lines will represent five millimeters. Okay, so that kind of gives us a rough idea um, that our image has to stay in between those two guidelines. So the next step is we need to open up those images that we've just found off the internet. And then open up our little design. What we want to do is we want to start off with the clock face. Now all we want to do is grab the black. We don't want to grab any backgrounds that are there. So if you go to the magic wand tool, which is four down, if you can't see it there, if you hold the right, the left click and then go down to the magic wand and select it, you then select each of the white backgrounds. So if you have to hold shift, if you've got multiple back, multiple white backgrounds, and do so. Now what you're seeing there is we've selected all the white. However, we want the black. So what we need to do is we'll go up to select here and inverse. So from there, we can just go copy, edit, copy, go to our clock face and edit, paste. Now you can see that's not quite the size we want. So we can transform that by edit, Free transform. I'm holding the shift key and I'll drag it just a bit before that guideline and drag it a bit before that guideline. Once we're happy with it, we can then tick the box. Do it with our design. So use the magic wand. And because we don't have anything inside, we can just select the white background on the outside. Select inverse. Edit, copy, edit, paste. And then from there we can edit, free transform, and I can bring that point almost touching the side. Almost touching the side. Once I'm happy with it, again, I'll tick it up the top there. And that's pretty much what I, all I'm going to do for my clock design. So once I'm happy with it, I can then go File, Save, and you want to save a PSD and wherever your file location is. And I'll just put it on the desktop for now and hit OK. So that's one file that you need to send to me. The second file you need to send to me, you go Save As, and we're going to change this to a JPEG image. And then hit Save. You need to make sure that the slider is right as far as you can to the right and maximum quality and hit OK. 
So once you've done that, you can then close Photoshop and open up Adobe Illustrator. What we need to do now is we need to change the pixels into vector image and that's what the laser can read. So you go File, Open, and we're going to open that JPEG that we've just created. So Mr. Sinclair's clock face, JPEG, and Open. Now what you want to do is if you hover over your clock face, you can see it turns to has a blue outline to it. So uh, what you need to do is you left click it, then go Object, Image Trace, Make. Hit OK. So what that's going to do is that's going to find those pixels and make them nice and strong. You can see, however, that the image that we have in the center here has faded. So what we want to do is we'll go to this panel. So next to Presets, we'll go to this little panel, drop it down. We want to go Advanced and Ignore White. And then we also want to increase the threshold in order to grab that design back out. Alright, so I'm happy with that. It seems to have connected all those lines back up again. Once I'm happy with it, I can close the panel and go Expand. And now that's created lines on every uh, on my design, so the laser will follow those lines and etch it in. Once I've done that, you go File, Save As, and we need to change this to an EPS. Clean up the name, desktop, and save. The format needs to be None. You get rid of, untick all the options, and hit OK. Now what you need to do is you need to send me your clock face, your JPEG, your Photoshop, and also your new EPS. So these three you need to email them to me, or alternatively I'll have a USB that you can hand it in.